The District Finance Committee is a group of local business leaders that reside in the district and lend their professional expertise to the district by reviewing the monthly budget reports and providing recommendations and guidance to the Board of Education on financial matters as needed. At the April Board of Education meeting, the District Finance Committee made the following recommendations to the Board. To implement an $8 million cost containment plan. To go back to the voters for a second request, again asking for $0.28 cents per $100 of assessed home value, the same request made in the March 23rd referendum, and to seek a capital referendum. Remember that assessed home value is much different from market value. Homes have not been reassessed since the 1980s, so the assessed value is significantly lower than today's market value. A quick review of the first referendum ask. All three of these requests were included in a single vote. The Board of Education in its April meeting to go back to the voters on May 17th for a second referendum request. This time, removing the turf field projects, keeping the same operational request of $0.28 cents and the same capital request. The capital referendum consists of three major construction projects, one at Carcroft, Claymont, and Brandywine High School, and the demolition of the Burnett Building. The work plan for Carcroft Elementary will ensure that all of our buildings have the same standard of security when it comes to visitors accessing student populated areas of the building. In all buildings, except for Carcroft, visitors must be buzzed into the main office and then buzzed through a secure entrance into the school proper. Relocating the main office and ensuring Carcroft meets the same safety standards as the rest of our schools is the first of three projects. The second project is Claymont Elementary School. From the road, the building appears to be in great condition, but when you take a good look up close, you'll see that the infrastructure is starting to fail and in desperate need of repair. In terms of the mechanical systems, here's an example. This electrical panel was made by Westinghouse. Westinghouse went out of business over 30 years ago. So finding the parts needed for repair and replacement is becoming extremely challenging for the facilities department. You'll see John Reed standing here next to a locker. Remember that Claymont used to be a high school. It now houses elementary students. These lockers are assigned to second grade students, so short that they can't even reach the coat hook or the shelf in the locker to put their books on. Classrooms are in need of update and renovation. Brandywine High School, again, failing infrastructure that desperately needs to be addressed. There's roof issues that invariably cause moisture problems in the building, enclosing the breezeway between the building and the gymnasium. VAC systems to be more efficient. And the last project is the demolition of the Burnett building. It has not been used as a standalone school since 2001. Key takeaways that you can share with community members. First, a reminder that there are four projects. Three are major construction projects. One is a demolition project. The fact that the capital request is actually what we call tax neutral. The increase is offset by debt retirement coming due at the same time. So the taxpayer will not see an increase in his or her taxes due to the capital request. All these projects are essential and will need to be completed. Because we've gone to the state and included them in a referendum request, the state will actually pay for 61% of the cost, leaving the district responsible for 39%. Because this work has to be done, if not covered through the referendum, then the district will incur 100% of the cost of the upgrades. Now for the operational referendum. When you hear the word operational referendum, think of the word operate. Everything that the district needs to operate schools is included in the operational piece of the budget. Textbooks, desks, chairs, copy paper, technology, trash cans, weed whackers, anything and everything it takes to run this school district. You can also think about the word operation. When you need an operation, you have a health issue that needs to be corrected in order to return to your original condition so that you have the same functionality 
that you did before. The same is true for the school district when it comes to an operational referendum. The district has an operating budget of $173 million. Of that amount, 66.3 comes from local revenue. This local revenue is split into three different buckets. Personnel, all the costs associated with salaries, OECs, other employment costs. Fixed, things like utilities. We know we spent $3 million in utilities last year. We're confident that we'll spend $3 million in utilities next year. Not a lot of cutting we can do. And then non-personnel, the district and school budgets that pay for all the supplies and resources needed to run the district. So if we remove the fixed costs, we have $63.3 million in our local budget. It's from that amount that the $8 million in cuts needs to come. It's important that we consider financial stewardship. We owe that to our community. How do you know when something's a core value? It's done when it's not needed to be done. So the district has not waited to be great financial stewards of the local tax dollar. Financial transparency, you heard earlier about the district finance committee made up of community members, business leaders who are respected for their expertise in finance and in business. We also have the first and only in the state referendum oversight committee, a committee again of, of community members who meet on a quarterly basis reviewing the projects and the expenses associated with the 2012 referendum. Business office protocols. You may have noticed that the district operates in a much different manner than it did several years ago. Budget administrators now have real-time access to their budgets. All expenditures are approved by our CFO, Scott Kessel, line item by line item. Again, as a means of being very transparent and fiscally responsible with the local tax dollars. Another example is the creation of the staff allocations team. And the district is constantly seeking alternate funding sources, whether it's writing grants or joining consortiums such as the Brink, in order to leverage purchasing power, along with financial stewardship, is ensuring that the local taxpayer is getting the bang for the buck that the investment being made is reaping the desired results. If asked about successes since the last referendum, what would you say? Well, I'm sure that each of us can speak to specific items and accomplishments associated with our individual areas of responsibility. It's important that we convey broader accomplishments of the district as a whole, ensuring that our community understands and values the educational experience and dividends being achieved every day in our classrooms and schools. A few examples. Since 2011, Brandywine has experienced the greatest amount of student achievement growth since the district has been tracking achievement data. Not only are all students growing, but students in our subgroups are growing at a greater pace, which means our efforts at closing the achievement gap are paying off. Below is a single example, low income versus non-low income in reading. In this four-year comparison, increases of 8 or 9 percent are considered high. Notice how many groups are in double digits. Data similar to this exists for other subgroups in reading and mathematics, in which many areas show evidence of narrowing of the achievement gap, a gap that is still far too great and demands our continued attention. For the past two years, Brandywine has had the highest achieving comprehensive traditional public high school in terms of SAT scores in the state. You might have read in the paper recently the number of our students that are getting perfect scores on the SAT or missing one or two problems. Unbelievable success. This is the Concord Alpha One team. Recently, they took first place in the nation in the Service Source Ability One Challenge. Check out the press release. What's the level of competition? Duke University was the winner of the collegiate competition. Concord High School, Brandywine School District, was the winner of the high school competition. That's elite programming. A fluke? No. 
Last year, Mount Pleasant High School had a first place national team in the TSA competition. Prior to that, the Concord MIT Lemelson Award winning competition team, fourth place again in the Ability One Challenge. Other accomplishments, Brandywine High School, first place in the state in math league last year. P.S. DuPont, math counts national competition last year. Currently, we have two Odyssey the Mind teams that are going to compete in the world championships. Recently, Mount Pleasant High School's VEX robotic team missed going to the world competition by one loss. You may remember that the 2012 referendum included a special line item for interventionists to be returned to the elementary classroom. An incredible reduction of 46% of behavior referrals since 2012. Availability and Accessibility to Instructional Technology In 2011-12, there were 35 mobile devices deployed in the district. By the beginning of school next year, as students walk through the door on the first day, the Instructional Technology Plan will have placed over 5,000 mobile devices where they should be in the classroom as a necessary component of educating today's 21st century learner. Take a guess at how much our graduating classes since 2012 have earned in scholarships and awards. Chances are you weren't close to $84 million between our three high schools. There's three reasons, not only for this incredible accomplishment, but all the accomplishments we just reviewed and the thousands of others that could have been listed. First, we have great students. Second, great staff. From outstanding and dedicated educators to custodial maintenance providing clean and healthy learning environments, paraprofessionals, food service workers, transportation, building and district administrators, each directly and indirectly contributing to the overall success of our students. While impressive, we know that we have much more work to do, that it's about continuous improvement, and that's where our district success plan comes into play. Key pieces of that plan include better meeting the individual needs of students, focusing on the social and emotional welfare and growth of our students, ensuring that teachers, administrators, and students are technologically proficient, continuation and expansion of STEM programming, and the goal of greater course and elective offerings to our high school students through the use of long-distance learning opportunities. And a preface before we hit the next slide. Don't want to be accused of a scare tactic. That it's not. Instead, this is a harsh dose of reality. Should we not pass the second referendum? Deep and significant cuts in staff across all departments, all levels. Significant cuts in programming, Programming that we have worked hard to put into place. Programming that is achieving the desired results. That helps build the relationships between students, schools, and educators. Services provided to staff, students, parents, and our community. While we definitely understand the direct impact that those cuts will have, there's always the hidden ripple effects. Class sizes will increase. School climate will be affected. Academic achievement will be affected. Once those cuts are made and implemented, the residual effects will last for years, even if a referendum is passed down the road. And finally, there's a catch-22. These projects have timelines. Without the needed funds, the district will be unable to take advantage of the cost-share opportunity, leaving the work to be done down the road with the district incurring 100% of the cost. Here are the key takeaways to share about the operational referendum. We met our commitment made during the last referendum. We promised that, that money would last for three years and made a commitment that if we could extend it to four years, we would. We met that commitment. Please help dispel the rumor. We're not asking for a 28% increase in local taxes. The request is 28 cents per $100 of assessed home value. 
It's imperative that our parents and community members know that an $8 million deficit is significant and will have impact on all programming and services we offer for students across all levels. Finally, when we pass this referendum, the excellence that is Brandywine will continue. Now we all have a job to do. Each and every one of us needs to get the word out, whether you live in the district or not. All of us are responsible to share, communicate, and encourage our community members to come out and support the referendum. Vote for and bring five more. If each of us can get five yes votes out to the poll on May 17th, we will be successful in keeping Brandywine moving forward.